Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com. And today we're gonna to do an electric bike conversion. Now in the past, I've done some e-bike conversion videos with some pretty weird kits. You know, there've been some interesting, innovative parts, but I've gotten a lot of requests for, uh, you know, e-bike kits that you can just find on Amazon or just normal e-bike kits. So that's what I've got here today. And we're gonna install a typical Amazon kit on an electric mountain bike here. Now this is just a Schwinn. There's nothing special about it. And then this is a uh, kit from a company called Yosei Power. I don't know too much about them, but it seemed like a pretty basic kit that you'd find anywhere, simple to install. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let me bring you in here, we'll check out what's in the kit. Let's do a little opening here. Let's see what we've got. All right, so this is a basic rear wheel motor kit. It's a 48 volt system. It's 500 watts, but it's got a 20 amp controller. So it's about 960 peak watts. Comes with everything, uh, apparently a little bag here, but you've got your motor. This should be the battery in here. I think these are all the rest of the kit parts. Yeah, so we've got our wiring, some tools. That's always nice. Some more tools, some brake levers. So uh, yeah, basically, you know, a very simple but easy to use kit. So let's get this thing installed. And now the first thing you usually do is you swap out the uh, rear wheel here and we're gonna put in the motor wheel in its place. So let's get this guy out. And then once I pull this wheel out, I think I'm gonna have to pop off this free wheel here and put it onto the motor because the motor didn't actually come with the free wheel. Though I noticed it did come with a tool for removing this one which is probably for the best because otherwise I'd just be throwing away a perfectly good freewheel here and all these gears. Now to get this freewheel off, first we're gonna remove this hardware here. And now we can access these teeth that are down inside the freewheel and they give us this nice tool. Except that it's not this one, it's the smaller one they give us here. So let's try that one. So this tool will go right down in here and that grabs the teeth of the freewheel. And then I can just wrench on that sucker and open it up. There we go. Sucker's on tight. All right, and we're off. So now we don't need this wheel anymore. And this will go onto our motor wheel. And so from here, I gotta slide off all of this hardware, just like on the original wheel. Now you just wanna be real careful not to cross thread this thing. So go slow, keep it straight, and nice and easy, get that on there. There should not be any resistance. It should go on pretty easily. And that's gonna self-tighten it the first time you start pedaling on it. So you don't have to wrench on that too hard. Now I'm gonna put my hardware back on and our nice little cap here to make the axle nuts look pretty. Okay, so now we're ready to transfer over our tire and tube. So first step is you let the air out of the tire until you can get it off of the old wheel. And you carefully unseat the bead. You can use tools for this. Or if you've spent years in a bike shop, your fingers will just be up to the challenge. And then just be careful when you pull the valve stem out here because it's a little bit fragile and you can easily break that connection here and ruin that tube. Then you just pull the whole tire off. Okay, now I would say we can go ahead and put this on the new wheel here, but I noticed there's no rim strip. The rim strip is a piece of rubber that covers the holes here so that they don't uh, cut the tube on that sharp edge. So I'm just gonna pull the old rim strip off of this rim here. So you just grab the edge of that and it'll slide right out. Kind of looks like a big rubber band here. All right, now I'm gonna transfer it onto the new wheel. We're just gonna line up that valve stem hole with the same hole on the new rim here. If you forget to line it up, you just won't be able to put your valve through the rim. All right, now we're lined up and we can put the tire on our new rim here. So same idea, you're gonna seat that bead in the rim. Then you're gonna line up that valve stem. I missed it by a little bit. There we go. Gonna gently feed that valve stem through and then starting where the valve is, you'll seat the second bead. Then you can just work your way around. Because these are big mountain bike tires, you can pretty much do this by hand without any tools. All right, now we're all seated. Disc rotor time now. We're just gonna unbolt this old uh, disc rotor here. And that rotor now goes onto our motor. Fortunately, they have the same bolt spacing, but that's not always guaranteed, so it's a good thing to check. And now with the disc rotor on, we can go ahead and transfer this wheel back into the bike. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that the wire exits up when the bike is upside down. That's so that when the bike is right side up, the wire actually exits down and that creates a drip loop so that any water that lands on this wire doesn't just follow it back into the motor. 
Okay, now I do hear a little disc brake rub, but we'll probably just have to adjust the caliper on there so that we're not rubbing on the disc brake, but we'll do that afterwards. Now that we've got the motor on, we can go ahead and look at the battery and controller. And a nice thing about this kit is that they're actually combined, so it's one less part you have to install. Inside of here is our controller and we have our wire connectors here. Here are the keys. Let's open up that uh, mount here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the bike back over. Probably a little heavier now. Not too bad, it's not a terribly heavy 500 watt motor. Now let's take a look at this. This is the moment of truth to see if the mount for the battery lines up with the water bottle buses here. And it's already looking like they're not gonna line up. And they definitely do not. So that's initially a little bit of a problem, but not to worry, I thought that might be the case here, so I came prepared. I have, drum roll please, Grin Technologies Triple Bob. This is a cool little mounting plate that's designed so that you can put these types of battery brackets pretty much anywhere on a bike. And this one's the triple, it's probably more than I need. I probably needed the double, but let's see how it fits. Basically, you've got this uh, plate here that has new water bottle bosses, which are definitely a lot stronger than the ones in the bike anyways. So you can mount this using the supplied cable ties anywhere on pretty much any tube where it'll fit. Now, if your bike has water bottle bosses that are mounted higher up, you're not gonna have to deal with this issue like I did. This bike specifically just had them very low on the down tube, so I had to get creative with this solution. Hopefully that's not gonna be an issue for you. All right, let's make sure the battery fits in here. That's also kind of important. Oh, it's gonna be close. Whoo, we barely cleared that. Now that we've got the battery on here, it is wiring time. So let's get all of our wiring set up. So we've got our throttle, our motor wire, our pedal assist, and our brake cutoffs. So let's slide these grips off. Now in this case, my brake levers are actually built into my shifters, so I'm not gonna swap in the uh, new brake levers with the uh, motor inhibitor. If you wanna be extra safe, you can swap those onto your bike. Basically what that does is when you pull the brake levers, it cuts any power to the motor. So it's like an extra safety that you can't give throttle and braking at the same time. But as long as you know not to brake and give throttle at the same time, you aren't gonna have an issue. So let's get these grips off and I will leave my brakes, but I will slide on my throttle. Here's that throttle. Grip goes back on. Sometimes these grips are gonna be a little long now and kind of hangs off the end. If it feels funny, you can cut it short. If not, you can just leave it the way it is and your bar will just be a little longer now. And we'll tighten that throttle in place there. All right, so this wiring bundle is gonna plug in down at our controller here. Let's find the matching connector. Here it is. All right, and this is gonna run up to our handlebars and let us plug in all of our different accessories. Like I said, we're not gonna use those uh, brake inhibitors, so two of these are gonna be left unused. We've got our throttle here, and we've got one more. That's probably the display. I think this is it. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a little display here. So let's pop that open and install that. So for the display, I've just wiggled out the uh, grip here a little bit to give us some space. Then I'll just bolt that on right on the uh, inside of the the grip here. People always rib me about doing these installs over grass or something, that if you drop something you'll never find it. Well there you go. Dropped the bolt, found it right away. Nice thing with this kit is everything is color coded. So I know that if it's green, it's the display. And if it's yellow, it's the throttle. I would have loved to see them include some plastic covers for anything you don't use. Like I'm not using these brake inhibitors, so that would have been nice but we can always cover that up with some electrical tape or something. I'm gonna give you a pile of cable ties here so you can run your wires and make them look nice and pretty however you like. Unfortunately, you get about 90 feet of extra wire here, so I'm gonna have to bundle this up a bit and make it look not quite as ridiculous here. Perhaps I can use this bag they gave me and bundle the wire up in there. Let's see if it'll fit in the space that's left here. So a little bit tight, but we'll make it fit. Right, now there is a pedal assist sensor, but I think I'm gonna leave that off because I'm pretty much just gonna throttle this bike around. So I'm gonna start cleaning up the wiring here so we can get rolling. Let's see how much of this messy wiring we can shove in the bag here. All right, and now that our wiring is as cleaned up as we can get it, at least with the nine million linear feet of cable that they gave us, it's the moment of truth. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Guess we can pull this little protective thing off. Now let's turn it on. All right, we're firing up. 
and looks like we're on maybe low battery let's give it a little throttle nothing or right, maybe we gotta turn it up let's try that oh there we go yeah now we're talking and right, looks like we get up to 38 39 i assume that's kilometers per hour so 39 kilometers per hour it's about 25 miles an hour Eh, not bad. There's some power in there. All right, so the battery is pretty low, but uh, might as well go ahead and start riding it just to see how it works right out of the box, and then we'll charge it up a bit and do a little more riding. Well, so far the kit works great, but these brakes are crap. Come on, Schwinn. Oh, man. Whee! So I will say that for a Amazon kit, this is quite nice. You know, maybe I don't even have to qualify that with for an Amazon kit. I mean, it works really well. It's surprisingly powerful. It's not that expensive. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Now the wire management leaves a little something to be desired, but the fact that they give you this bag to sort of stuff as much in there as possible is kind of nice. But anytime you're doing a DIY e-bike, they're making these kits to fit all sorts of different bikes and sizes and frames and all sorts of weird stuff, tandems, whatever. So they give you more wire than you need and wire management is always a little bit of an issue. But all things considered, I'd say uh, good job USA Power. I really like this thing. All right, so uh, last but not least, before we go, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter that will win a copy of one of my books is... Indigo Breeze. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, just put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. For those that don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. <laughs>